In the hospital, we've got a couple of different uh, isolation precautions that we can use for our patients that the doctor might order. Um, first of all, on every patient, we've got standard precautions, of course. Wash your hands, wear gloves. Basically, the um, overlying principle for standard precautions is if it's wet and it's not yours, wear gloves. Um, and wash your hands before and after you leave a room. With all of these other isolation precautions, it's important for you to remember your patient's feelings. You might be walking in with gown and gloves and uh, face mask, anything um, that might freak them out a little bit, especially if they're kids. You're going to want to keep their feelings in mind, make sure that they understand why you're coming in with so much gear on, and that they uh, understand that the reason that they're in a room alone is because we don't want to spread infection to other patients as well, that they're not being isolated because we don't like them kind of thing. Especially with little kids, they kind of freak out with uh, um, precautions like this. So contract precautions, the people that we're looking at um, with contact precautions are people who have MRSA, um, VRE, scabies, um, or wounds or abscesses with like a lot of drainage that is kind of uncontained. Um, with these um, contact precautions, it's important to know with all of these precautions um, what you need to do for them. You need to make sure that you're not taking in anything and bringing it back out without disinfecting it. Um, you need to make sure that your patient has a private room or a room um, with somebody who's got the same disease. Um, we don't want to spread infection to other patients on accident because they're sharing a room. Um, make sure that you're wearing gown and gloves for contact precautions. That's the main thing with this. Um, with all of these, gown and gloves, with all of these uh, precautions, when it comes to linen, you're going to want to bag it in the room and then have somebody hold another bag outside and double bag it. You want to not spread the germs that are on the outside of the bag as well. Um, droplet precautions, uh, those are for people who have bacterial meningitis, the seasonal influenza, um, pertussis, which is also called whooping cough, or mumps. This uh, droplet precautions is just like if you're within three feet of your patient, then you, uh, then the droplet can get onto you and you can spread it to somebody else. Um, so things that you need to worry about with droplet precautions, you need to, again, make sure that you're not taking things in and out without disinfecting it in between. Um, with this one, you need to wear a surgical mask also. So alongside the gown and gloves, make sure that you're wearing a surgical mask as well. Um, make sure, again, that you're bagging the linen in the room and then double bagging it on the outside of the room as well. Make sure that you dedicate all of the equipment that you're going to need for your patients, like a stethoscope, um, the neuron monitor. Make sure that you've got all of that set in the room just specifically for that patient, that they're not, you're not cross-contaminating or that you're cleaning off your blood pressure cuff in between patients so that you're not spreading germs to other patients. With airborne precautions, we're looking at patients with um, chicken pox, measles, um, tuberculosis, anything that um, these uh, droplets can float in the air all over their room. So we're going to keep them in a negative pressure room. Uh, that means you've got their room, and then this is just slightly more negative than the pressure outside of the room, so air is going to flow into the room rather than out. So that makes it less likely for that patient to spread um, airborne, their airborne diseases. Um, with this, you're going to have to have a custom fit mask. So usually nursing students don't get a patient who has tuberculosis or anything like this because they have to make their own mask, uh, a custom fit mask for their, um, your nurse. When you're transporting any of these patients, make sure that they are wearing uh, gown or gloves or uh, mask according to whichever um, disease that they have or all of them if they need if need be. Um, make sure that with airborne precautions that you're closing their door. Um, we don't want, although we've got the negative pressure room, we want to make sure that that door is closed just so that we can uh, decrease the chance of um, spreading that airborne disease. All right, you've got also neutropenic. Neutropenic means that we are protecting the patient from us. So this is a patient like um, with an immunocompromised patient. So maybe somebody with a severe form of AIDS, uh, somebody with uh, who's getting chemotherapy. We've got to make sure that that patient, their uh, white blood cell count uh, being low 
isn't going to affect their healing process. So we make sure that we wear gown and gloves and a mask always when we go into their room. We, don't, we wanna wash our hands really well before we go in because we wanna make sure that we aren't um, spreading any of our diseases to them. A huge thing with this is don't take care of a patient if you're sick. Even if you're just a little sick with a cough, that can kill one of these patients because they're so immunocompromised. Same goes for a chemotherapy patient. The huge thing with chemotherapy patients is make sure that you double glove and mask, or just double glove, and then wear a mask as well. Um, these patients, uh, that chemotherapy is so toxic that it, when it even comes out in the urine, that it can burn your hands. So you need to make sure that you're double gloving just in case you spill a little bit. And make sure that you also don't have any uh, fresh fruit or flowers in any of these rooms. Those introduce bacteria into the rooms and can cause these patients to uh, become sick from it.